Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. In the last video we saw T60 with a nice game with black against fire. Let's see now what Big Lila can do with black, also against fire. This is the reverse game of the King's Gambit except with shallow defense. And we have E4, E5, F4 and now E takes on F4, the accepted King's Gambit. Knight f3 and here the main move is g5 but in this one we have the shallop defense with knight f6. We have now e5 and knight h5 defending this pawn, bishop e2 and now g5. And here now since uh, white is nicely lined up against this knight, white could try maybe to win this pawn but this is not so great because of queen takes on g5 hitting g2. After bishop takes and queen takes, black is actually better here. After queen f3, queen takes, bishop takes, black can play knight c6. And he's still a pawn up and he's also attacking uh, e5 and the d4 can't be played. So black is, uh, black is better. Instead of that we have castles and this is now the end of the book. And here Lila played h6, just as uh, Fire did in the first game. And now we have d4, d6. And here <clears throat> Lila continued in the reverse game with c4, uh, with the idea to uh, push that pawn up the board before knight c3. In this one, Fire played rook e1. And now we have bishop e7, pawn takes on d6, pawn takes on d6, and now here in this position Lila considered that c4 is still the, the best way to go with the same idea of developing this knight here at some point. But at this point fire went for this h6 pawn and took on g5. We have pawn takes on g5 and now he took back his piece on h5. But now the h file opened up with some attacking prospects here for Lila. We have now king f8 since uh, both of these pieces were pinned. Uh, to this king. Lila played king f8 to get out of uh, from both of them. We have now bishop f3 attacking b7 and now Lila played here d5. A good move which reduces the bishop's scope on this uh, diagonal. It also allows maybe bishop d6 at some point and uh, in this position now fire played c3. And here he has a good position. He seems to, to have a solid position. He only has uh, two pawn islands versus um, Lila's three. Lila has an isolated pawn here and doubled pawns and also uh, arguably weaker king maybe than uh, white. But black has a lot of dynamic uh, potential in this position and they both evaluated this actually as better for black. Fire evaluated this at about uh, half a pawn advantage for black while Lila was much more optimistic and she thought that she's better, evaluated it at minus 1.3. Now, by the way, I keep saying she and he, and some of you mentioned that this is incorrect and I should refer to these engines as, um, as it. And um, I would like to know what is your opinion about this. Are you bothered by me calling these engines he or she? Let me know. In the comments below what are your thoughts on this. I know it's semantically incorrect but um, but if this doesn't bother you guys then I would continue referring to these engines with he or she in order to differentiate easier between them. So just let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this if you have any improvements or uh, suggestions regarding this. All right so Lila thought that this is minus 1.3 for black and in this position Stockfish really wanted to develop uh, some piece here to the 6th rank but before that Lila thought that it's, it's better to transfer this rook to the king side in the attack and she played here a5 with the idea of playing rook up and over to execute a, a rover maneuver and attack this pawn on h2 which is not so easy to defend and if white plays h3 at any point then that pawn becomes a target to the light square bishop. So here fire decided to defend this pawn then with the knight and played knight d2 
and after rook h6 played knight f1 and now the pawn is defended Lila played rook h6 anyway and here fire played now queen b3 he came out with the queen to attack this pawn on on d5 and this pawn is not so easy to defend it's defended once by the queen but uh, it's not enough of course and playing rook d6 would be really counterproductive since this rook is now nicely positioned for an attack so what is Lila supposed to do now well of course she found again a magnificent move in this position she played here knight a6 which seems mysterious but actually is a very very strong move now the point is that if fire doesn't take this pawn now then Lila will play knight c7 defend this pawn and then fire can take it so if he wants it then he really has to to take it now but his dilemma here is that none of the captures are really that great the worst of the two is to capture it with the queen after this Lila could play bishop d6 to avoid the queen trade and now knight c7 is threatened with tempo and uh, the idea is that after knight c7 the queen has to leave the d file which means that this bishop now is no longer pinned to that queen which also means that this bishop is defending the f4 pawn which could be taken like this and if the pawn is defended then g4 could come and if Lila gets in g4 then she really has a very very strong attack in this position so just to illustrate the attacking potential the attacking idea let's just assume that white plays here b3 and now after knight c7 the queen has to go let's say it takes the spawn and now g4 can come and here bishop e4 is the strongest move after which white can uh, resist longer uh, against this attack but let's just assume that the bishop comes here just for the sake of uh, uh, showing the attacking idea here well now after bishop back to d1 Lila could already sack the rook here on h2 and after the knight takes rook takes and king takes the queen can come out to h4 with check and this is now a mating attack after king g1 the queen can take the rook with check and then mate uh, with g3 since h3 is guarded by the light squared bishop so we can see how dangerous Lila's attack could be here instead of queen takes on d5 the alternative is bishop takes on d5 and this is what actually Lila thinks that is best bishop takes here after which um, she intended to play here a4 and attack this queen and try to uh, remove the queen from the b file so that the b7 is not attacked twice and of course the pawn is immune because the queen has to defend the bishop and then after queen c4 Lila intended to continue with knight c7 again attacking this bishop with tempo and after bishop e4 again bishop d6 and with this pawn being defended again g4 could come with a strong attack now this variation is not so deadly as the queen takes on d5 variation but it's still very very strong now fire didn't like any of these captures and uh, instead he decided to take this bishop on e7 so he gave up the exchange and now after queen takes on e7 he took on d5 with the queen now b4 is uh, is not so strong since uh, f4 is hanging and even though black could take this bishop on f3 and he would still be better uh, white can get some chances by taking that pawn and then taking this rook so g4 is not that strong here instead Lila played b6 to defend this pawn and now we have queen e4 going for a queen exchange but at this point Lila changed plans and played here rook e6 intending to invade to white's back rank we have queen d3 and now rook e1 creating some panic there on the back rank since uh, both the knight and uh, the bishop are pinned and in this position now fire played b3 intending bishop a3 with some uh, tricks but Dila considered that at this point uh, is essential to play h3 here to stop uh, g4 and only then play something like b3 but fire went for b3 immediately and now Lila continued with her plan g4 attacking this bishop and now fire played bishop a3 so attacking both the rook and the queen and uh, in order to save the queen of course Lila is forced now to give up the exchange for the knight we have rook takes and now queen takes on a3 
and here fire now wins another pawn with bishop takes on g4 and after bishop takes on g4 the queen can take the knight on a6 and as a result of these exchanges Lila is now a bishop up fire gave up the exchange here on e7 and now he uh, gave up two pieces to get back a rook so he's a piece down we have now queen e7 with the idea of continuing the attack with queen e3 check we have now queen takes on b6 and now queen e3 and if the king now goes to h1 then uh, after king g7 getting out of uh, possible checks here on the 8th rank uh, no matter what uh, fire plays here let's say queen c7 Lila can continue here with queen g3 threatening mate on h2 and uh, queen takes on f4 doesn't help of course because of rook takes on h2 and then mate on g2 so king h1 is not really good fire played rook f2 now if the queen checks here then just rook back and uh, Lila cannot make progress but she played now f3 and now queen e1 check is actually a mating threat with uh, f2 so for example if now the queen takes on a5 then after this check and rook back f2 is uh, deadly the king has to go away and then the queen takes the rook with mate so what can um, fire do in this position well he can give a couple of checks but um, he has to be careful for example if he gives this check then after king g7 there are no more checks and uh, the mate is coming uh, he can also check on d6 but after king e8 the best is just to exchange the queens and uh, hope for the best because if he's trying to uh, to get some perpetual here with queen c6 check king e7 and then queen c5 check and king f6 he has to be very careful because the queen can hide on g5 with the queen d5 check f5 and again there are no more checks and uh, the queen will mate on e1 but instead of uh, these checks fire took first on f3 he wins another pawn and now we have bishop h3 again threatening nasty stuff queen e1 rook g8 and so on and at this point now fire decided to exchange the queens we have queen d6 check king e8 queen c6 check king e7 and now queen e4 check Lila has to exchange the queens and now we have rook g8 check king h1 and now since uh, the white king is in a mating net Lila would like to open a file and uh, mate on the back rank so she played here a4 fire of course can't take it because then after uh, rook here he has to give up the exchange again and lose instead we have rook e2 but now Lila decided to save this pawn and played a3 this pawn is uh, Lila's chance to promote and win otherwise without queening any pawns it's very difficult to win against um, all these pawns we have c4 and now rook g4 attacking these pawns but the idea here is really rook f4 and uh, rook f1 mating the king so we have now rook e3 trying to chase this uh, bishop away but here comes now bishop g2 check winning the e4 pawn with check we have king f1 and now king d7 getting out of the pin and intending to pick this pawn up but now we have b4 and um, fire is attacking lila's hope here this pawn we have bishop b1 and rook takes on a3 but now fire also loses a pawn and he has less and less pawns and as long as lila can maintain this f7 pawn uh, he has a completely winning position of course fire has a c4 attack but also a2 and he can defend both we have c5 and now rook takes on b4 rook a7 check king e6 c6 and now bishop back to g6 to defend this pawn and now if fire plays c7 then the king can come closer to d7 and stop that pawn we have king e2 and now rook c4 attacking the pawn c7 king d7 and now fire promoted the pawn but the king takes it king f2 rook c7 of course fire avoids the rook exchange king d7 king f3 king e7 a3 king f6 and soon the f pawn will march up the board we have king f2 rook c4 and here now after uh, king g2 really uh, the game is essentially over uh, at this point we have rook c5 king g3 rook c4 
And even though the, the game is uh, essentially over, there are still about 30 moves uh, from this game. So let's see now the final moves. Lila is pushing the F pawn up the board. Check. And the pawn is going. And uh, soon it will become a queen. We have the bishop shielding the pawn. Then another check. And now we will have a new queen. After which the rook sacks. And here now after h3 we have Queen b5 finally mating the white king. A very interesting game in the shallop defense. In the end, I would like to thank to Andrei Kovalenko for his $20 contribution to my channel. And of course, I would also like to thank to René, Adolf, Pavel and everyone else who donated. Also visit the store and check out two of my other videos on the right. Please subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.